One of the more popular features in Schoology is the ability to assign and use a rubric to assess graded items like assignments and discussions. I will admit that setting up your rubric does take some time up front, but using the rubric for grading is really time efficient and once it's made, you can use it in all of your classes and share it with your colleagues. First, let me go into a practice class to create my rubric. Then I will show you how to copy this rubric to your other classes. If you've seen the other Schoology videos, you know that step number one is making sure you create your assignments in a folder. So if you don't already have one, take a second to make one. Once you are inside your folder, use the Add Materials button to add the discussion or assignment that you plan to score with your rubric. I think this assignment will be worth 100 points, so I'll leave that. And I'll make sure that I have a grading category because if you don't design a grading category, you will not be able to grade with a rubric. I can add a due date if I want. And as personal practice, I always turn off the commenting area just for assignments because students occasionally try to submit their work in the little comment boxes, which are really designed as a forum for them to ask questions about the assignment. And to avoid that confusion, I often just hide those boxes. When you get to the scale or rubric area, you'll see that Schoology defaults to grading by a raw numeric score. But you can use the drop down menu to select one of the rubrics you have already made, or you can use the create new option to make a new rubric. First, let me name my rubric. The rest of the areas you see are all editable. So if I want my first criteria to be about some of the formatting requirements for this essay, I can click to adjust the title and I can add a description if I want. In the scale area, I can add my ratings. For this type of criteria where you either did it or you didn't do it, I really don't need four different categories, which is the default. So I can simply hover in the top right of the extra columns and delete them with the X. I also only want this criteria to be worth two points. So I will click on the four and the three and adjust them accordingly. Quick tip here is it's easier to adjust your points from the small end up, otherwise Schoology will rearrange these columns so that they're always in numeric order. And even though I only have a scale here for two points and zero points, I can still give a student one point or even 1.5 points when I assess with this rubric, which I'll show you soon. And I can make my scale numbers decimals as well. To add another criteria, just click the plus criteria green button. Schoology will add a new row that is a copy of the one I just made. That works well for me when I add heading details, but when I move to the other criteria on my rubric, I'm going to need more than two columns each. So when I add criteria for the next item on my rubric, which is the headline for the consumer product review, I'll just hover on the line between columns and I will see a plus that I can click on to add additional columns. This is where it's really nice to have an electronic version of your rubric so you can just copy and paste. Again, all of the areas are editable, so I can adjust points as needed as well. And Schoology will keep a running tally of the total points possible for this assignment for me at the very bottom. Note that Schoology does view your rubric in terms of points. So you can leave a rubric as four, three, two, one. And if you had six categories for that rubric, say for a six trait writing rubric, your total points for that assignment would only be 24. So if you have an essay like mine that you want to be worth more than 24 points, you're going to have to adjust that 4321 scale to adjust the scale point scores accordingly. I will repeat the process of adding criteria and scale descriptors until my rubric is built. One thing I've learned the hard way is that Schoology does not auto save this rubric. So for really long rubrics that I don't want to lose my work in, I will click the create button to save my work and then click create again to essentially save this assignment. And then I'll use that gear icon to go back in and edit my work. Just click on that rubrics cube type icon to continue editing the rubric. Let me pause this video and finish up this really long rubric so you can see what a finished one looks like. So my rubric is done and it actually ended up being worth 110 points. Notice that Schoology adjusted the points for me as well. I did not have to do that. 
Now that I've finished this rubric, I'm going to save it again. I'm just about ready to create this assignment, and I need to decide if I want the rubric posted on my assignment page for my students to see. Usually I do check this. If not, each student will still be able to see your rubric in the gradebook along with your assessment of their performance. So this is really just asking you whether or not you want it displayed on the page. I'm going to click Save Changes, and then I'll click on the name of the assignment to preview it. If you don't want the rubric showing visually on the page, again, you can just go back and edit the assignment and uncheck that Show to Students box. If I switch to a student's view, you'll see the page looks quite similar, except for the Submit Assignment button. And this is what a student uses to turn in his or her work. If the student has synced their Schoology and Google accounts, he or she can submit a Google Doc right from here as well. Now let me go back into Teacher View and I will show you how I grade with this rubric. I can see JC has submitted an assignment. It was on time and it needs grading. So I'm going to click on her name to view her work. I'm given a preview of her document, an area to leave her written or verbal comments, and an area to leave her an actual grade, where you can see that Rubik's Cube type icon again. And if I click on it, my rubric pops up and I can click through it to assess her work. As I click on the appropriate rating, Schoology is tallying the points for me. If I want to go back and adjust points, I can manually override, and I can leave her specific comments about each criteria. When I'm done scoring, I click Save. If you see that little comment balloon next to the score area, you can click it and leave additional comments here that can be just for you, or you can choose to show these to the student. If we switch back over to JC's view and visit her grades, you can see that she can see my overall comments, and if she clicks on the rubric icon, she can see the scoring details and specific comments I've left for her. So that's how you make and use a rubric. Equally important to know is how to share this rubric with your other classes so you don't need to recreate it from class to class or year to year. Rubrics live in your gradebook and in the grade setup area. So if we select gradebook from the left column and then choose grade setup, you will see an area where you can manage your grading scales and your rubrics. If I click on the word rubrics, I get a list of all of my existing rubrics. You can see that you can also use the add button to directly make a rubric right from here, in addition to having the option to create one when you're making an assignment or a discussion. I can also edit or delete rubrics from here. If a rubric has been used to score an assignment, the delete option is grayed out, as you can see here, because this rubric's being used in this class. And if I use that copy settings button, I can choose to copy my grading categories, scales, and or rubrics to any classes that I am an administrator or teacher in. So if you want your teammate to have a copy of this rubric, just ask them to make you an admin in their course and you'll be able to copy your rubric into their class. Notice though that I can't choose which rubrics I want to copy over, which is a little frustrating. So if I choose to copy these rubrics into my Wired Writing class, all of them will copy over, not just the consumer product review one. There's no harm in having lots of rubrics in a class, and I can go into Wired Writing's gradebook to delete the ones I don't want, but I still wish I had the ability to pick and choose which rubrics to copy instead of having to do them in bulk. So that wraps up how to create, edit, use, and copy rubrics in Schoology. Rubrics can be used to assess assignments and discussions, but not individual test questions right now. So try this feature out with an upcoming assignment or discussion to see how it can streamline your grading process while providing specific and detailed feedback for your students.